We are live. Right. So, um, right. <clears throat> right. Three, two, one. Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tyke Roundtable Show. This is episode 600. Yes, the big, the big 60. I never thought I would get to 600 episodes. I thought I would die or one of the panellists would actually kill me, actually. Um, but never mind, I made it, listeners and viewers. And thank you for your support. I've got a great panel. I think I've wrestled up some great stories. And I'm going to let the panel introduce themselves. First, we've got a special guest, Convesio, from Convesio, Tom Finelli. Um, Tom, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers, Tom? Sure. My name is uh, Tom Finelli. I'm the CEO and founder of Convesio, and we are a Docker-based, highly scalable, performant WordPress platform. Yes, they've been sponsoring the show for the last couple of months, and it's just a great platform. Um, I've got Andrew with me. Hopefully, he's a little bit happier than last week. Do you want to introduce yourself, Andrew? Yeah, I'm Andrew Palmer, variety of things, basically a digital advocate currently uh, with Grid Pain and a few other people. So uh, I'm having a lot of fun in the WordPress space. He does look a bit more cheerful this week, actually. <laughs> um, got JJ, the kin, the kin of WordPress. Her, um, oh, wow. Want to introduce yourself, JJ? Uh, John Jacoby, Buddy Press, BB Press. I uh, work at Sandhills Development on uh, Sugar Calendar, Easy Digital Downloads, and some other stuff. He's just a slightly busy man. And I've got a great friend of the show, Vito. Vito, would you like to introduce yourself? How are you doing? I'm Vito from uh, Atelier.io, our platform that helps web agencies and freelancers deliver projects to clients, systemizing the work internally and externally. And I've got my friend, John Locke. John, would you like to introduce yourself? John from Lockdown SEO, uh, providing SEO for manufacturing and industrial firms. Oh, and, and Sa Sally's here, by the way. Oh, right. I'll let Sally in. I don't actually. Oh, there we go. There we go. Let's let her in. There we are. Can you hear us, Sally? Can you introduce yourself, Sally? Uh, sure. My name is Sally Getch, rhymes with sketch. Uh, <clears throat> uh, hello, panel. And I'm from WP Fangirl and looking forward to talking with all. All right, let's go straight into one of the stories. We've got a reasonably large panel. I'm going to try and get this all done and finished in an hour or hour, 10 minutes panel. So hopefully you'll be able to stay with us until the end. Um but let's go straight into one of the stories. It's a, um, it's a really interesting story, surprising. WordPress announcement of epic proportions. Someone's quite, say, epic, but really quite interesting. Delicious Brains buys ACF, Advanced Custom Fields. So let's start off with Tom, your our guest. Was this a surprise? And um, what's your general thoughts about it, Tom? Yeah. Well, I'm a big Big fan of Delicious Brains and their product. I think they're really smart folks. And, uh, you know, also, I mean, ACF is huge. I was a little surprised by it. I didn't really see it coming. But I, there's a lot of consolidation happening, maybe not compared to the size of the WordPress market, but it definitely is picking up. And we see this with hosting companies being acquired, plug-in developers. The one thing I would say is I kind of like smaller companies buying companies because I feel like they've got a better chance at thriving. You know, we've seen tons of big hosting companies buy companies and they're just irrelevant, right? And they don't get the attention, the funding and the focus that they need to be successful. And so I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic by nature, but I'm optimistic that this is going to be a place where these guys can thrive and the product can thrive. Thanks for that, Tom. JJ, I, I was, I'm reasonably happy about it, actually. What about you, JJ? Uh, I am super excited for the folks at Delicious Brains, and I have, like, there, there is an alternate universe where uh, where Sandhills uh, may, may have also had acquired ACF, and uh, uh, Elliot had reached out to us, uh, Pippin mm -hmm. specifically, and, uh, and it was close. Uh, and so, you know, I could have, I could have been working on ACF instead, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
there was a, there was definitely a period of time where I was imagining what uh, the future of ACF would look like if I was going to be uh, sitting there chipping away at it. But uh, um, super excited for everybody. It's such a good move. I totally agree uh, with uh, with Tom and everyone that this is uh, it's like it's like a good home for ACF and uh, mm. optimistic about the direction that Delicious Brains is going to take. And um, Elliot just done a fantastic job to grow it to. I think it said in the article over a million installs, didn't it, JJ? Mm -hmm. A million is, uh, it's amazing for one person, one person, you know? I mean, yeah, you know, support I, and had a lot of help in the community and everything else, but uh, Elliot did an amazing job with ACF, super good. Yeah, such a great guy as well. I haven't, I haven't actually interviewed him, but I have listened to about three interviews and he just comes across as a really fantastic guy. Um, Sally, what did you think about it? I was uh, startled, and yet it is one of those things that makes perfect sense. Number one, because Elliot is freaking exhausted, uh, and I'm not surprised. And and that's a, you know, it's not sustainable to keep up with uh, the user base and the rapid changes to WordPress and all of the, when you have a user base that large, the, the bajillion feature requests uh, and Delicious Brains also makes really developer focused tools, which ACF is. So it, it seems like a, you know, it, just a, a sensible kind of match. And, you know, I was listening to the podcasts about it and there's like, you know, eight people that Delicious Brains is planning to have working on this from the beginning. And it uh, seems like it's a huge relief for Elliot. And hey, you know, they told those of us with lifetime licenses that we're they're still going to honor our lifetime licenses. So you know, <clears throat> it makes me happy because I want this plugin to be around. Well, it was. I think it was quite helpful that it's it was ridiculously cheap. Really, it was a it, the way you priced it. It was really some of the best value you could get in the WordPress ecosystem. Really, I always thought. He had priced uh, yes, it. even even when he switched to a, a subscription model, the pricing was extremely reasonable. Mm. So, what did you think, Andrew? I, I was delighted I, because you know Elliot is. Um, I've actually acquired. I acquired twenty two plugins, and I and I, the reason I did it is because the guy that I acquired the twenty two plugins of is knackered, and uh, you know Elliot must be so tired doing all the support he was always polite he never ever um was dissed anybody or you know he was he was the perfect guy to to have a, a beautiful plugin like this i think every single one of us that has built a website has used acf in some way or other to build a directory to build a car sales site to build a hotel site or whatever and uh i think it's a i think it's a great idea you know one one million plus installs from .org. I don't know how they how he's monetized it. I don't know how many premium subscriptions he's got, but it, it's a big plugin, you know, and it needs the support. And I think Delicious Brains will really, really put that on. And sorry about Sandhills not getting it because mm. I love EDD as well, and I've used it extensively. Um, but uh, And I think actually both of them would be a bit of a choice. You yeah, know, so well, if, I, if, I think they're if, both quite two quality teams. Yeah, exactly. So it would have been, so, a, it would have been a, a and I'd, I'd have felt the same, you know, if Pippin and his crew and JJ and your crew got it, then I'd have felt the same. I'd felt, I'm really positive about it. It's great. It's great. I, I actually got JJ's title wrong. He's the wizard, actually. It's not <laughs> the king, he's the wizard. Um, Vito, what did you think? quickly and then we'll wrap it up yeah, and I, would, um, I would agree with everyone uh, i would say that there's been uh, just a, a bit of a kind of a uprising against the lifetime uh, uh, question uh, for these users i saw a lot of uh, uh, noise on twitter and on facebook uh, uh, around this uh, and like sally said um uh, brad came up well, it was just like a one reply that it was sent to a private user to a single user privately uh, in a support chat that the screenshot went viral in the in the community over the past week. Uh, so for all that are worried, um, Brad kind of stepped up and said, uh, I didn't mean that uh, and everything is going to be cool. And so, um, yeah, I've been using uh, uh, both products, like both uh, uh, both of the uh, Delicious Brains project, po product. I've been using it with Tom recently even. 
and uh, and ACF. I think it's a good match. I think that uh, a, a product like ACF deserves a team. Uh, it deserves to go to the next level. Uh, so I think that what Elliot did is the right thing for the product, and it looks like it's the right thing for him as well. So everyone is happy. That's great. So, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go on to the next story. Um, but before that, I want to talk about my major sponsor, and that's Castos. Um, I had an interview with Matt Medeus yesterday, which will go live next week. And uh, Matt is now the Director of Marketing and Customer Success at Castos. And um, it's just a great platform if you want to get into podcasting. Um, I moved from them from a more established platform and I've been totally happy. I actually paid out of my pocket um, and then Matt, I had a discussion with Matt and they decided to become my major sponsor for over a year um, and I was just delighted and I've been delighted with their platform. Um, really easy to use, great interface and it's about the third of the price of the previous platform I was using and it's just a joy to use. So if you want to get into podcasting or you have clients who are thinking about it and looking for advice from you, you could do them a great favour and yourself by going over to Castos and having a look at what they got to offer. So on to story two, um, America Online. So Sally, what did you think of this article? I think you're muted. I am. Gosh, I should uh, be careful about that. Uh, America Offline. Well, um, uh, uh, it's talking uh, uh, a lot about how basically they're foreseeing that everyone is going to rush uh, outside and do stuff uh, with people in person uh, after we've all been locked up on on Zoom and uh, you know the degree to which that happens will uh, depend. Uh, I, I do kind of like this this line: um, "The biggest tech company's accrual of power remains one of the most serious problems of my lifetime." Um, dude, privilege. Uh, <clears throat> but I no longer talk about the internet itself as if it were an external and malignant force now that I've lived in such intimate contact with it for so long. Now, we're the people who've lived in intimate contact with the internet, like since there was an internet. Um, and I, I suspect that uh, our experiences are probably a little different from the, the you know, average Americans uh, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, what it's been like to be, you know, uh, working remotely. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we'll see. Mm. So, Tom, you know, a lot of companies, are, I, I was reading a pronouncement from Apple saying that they're insisting that their staff come back. Um, but obviously they spent a small fortune on a magnificent new headquarters so it would be a little bit embarrassing that most of the staff chose not to come back. What's your? What, how do you think the balance is going to be? Fine? I presume that your company is a distributed one, Tom. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's two sort of, I'll just give you two anecdotal points to this. So one, um, you know, and I forget it was one of the, um, uh, uh, Diamond, the head of, um, uh, is it Morgan Stanley? But, uh, you know, he was stating yeah, that, yeah, yeah he, everyone should go back, right? Uh, look, I think there's the real risk of a serious commercial real estate collapse after this pandemic. Oh, San man. Francisco is a ghost town from what I'm hearing from folks that are, are living there. And, you know, having been in SF the last 12 years, um, you know, and recently relocated to Florida, I can tell you that companies that are footing the bill for premium real estate who've now realized that they can actually um, survive in this digital environment of distributed work because they've been forced to are going to be rethinking whether or not they jump back into these big real estate expenses that they had before. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. The other thing that's kind of an interesting trend is, 
you know, it mentioned in an article airline travel. Well, how do you book airline travel? You book it online. How, well, I'm already seeing some of our clients in the travel space starting to get boosts in traffic to their site because people are starting to realize I can now start to book travel. Countries are starting to open up. And so I think that um, while things like Netflix might be uh, going down as people get, are getting back to work and getting back to living. Um, I definitely think that there's other things and business is going to be just as engaged as always online in this sort of new reality we have. It kind of biased, really. Um, I'll put this over to John. Um, I suppose I'm biased because I literally run my business and almost do all my business over Zoom, really, John. But I do think probably when you get into a slightly larger company size that having some face-to-face -face content has some value. What or don't you think it does, John? What's your, what's your point of view? No, I, I, I'm, I'm with Tom. I think that this uh, past year and a half with COVID is going to permanently change uh, a lot of things because – I can tell you when I first um, started working in technology, every place was very much like you have to come into the office every day, no remote. And I think that this has shown that that has primarily been about having people with their butts in the seats to where middle management can keep an eye on them. And if you have systems in place and your company's you know, efficiently – managing people i think you have the culture uh through zoom and you know other means i think that you uh get the work done and i think a lot of employees are like i'm tired of giving up like two two and a half hours of commute time each day to sit in traffic and be stressed out just to come to an office um when i can do this from home so i think that part is permanently going to change yeah, I think you're well, right. But only if their employers don't expect them to arrive at, you know, eight instead of nine because they don't have to commute, which is something that I did hear about happening. Mm. Mm. So, uh, Andrew, I, I kind of envision a kind of middle ground where, like, it's co work. It's like a co working environment where you can come in when, it, when, it, when it's really necessary or a group thinks it's important to have a face-to-face -face. well I, i'll give you a, a real live um example vita and i vita and i've been working together since really you know at Atarim launched as wp feedback and we i needed a, a a screen i you know i'd missed out a screen and so i zoomed up to see him we sat in, in my little mini on a nice sunny day and we came up with an idea for a work from home and work from everywhere platform you know because we were with each other, next to each other, talking to each other, interacting with each other with no distractions of the birds singing in the garden or whatever. So I think that that, that um, definitely having worked in offices and having worked in my, my log cabin for a little while now, you know, over, over a year here, I think that what companies can do, what there's an opportunity for a company to actually say, just come in whenever you like, right? You don't have to, there's no, you know, real flexi working. If you want to come in the office, because we've got this bit of real estate, come in the office. If you don't, don't bother, work work from home or work from everywhere, you know, have a platform um, to work from everywhere. But the, the point is, is that pe people are getting Zoom fatigue. People are getting... Um, uh, uh online fatigue as well so you it's just about going out and having meetings or having meeting up with people so maybe the wordpress way of having a word camp maybe these big companies just can can have their own version of a word camp every three months or six months or something to so make it an event and then people can get together and uh and be sociable and, and come up with some great yeah. ideas Obviously, I, I do agree with Tom, though. I think there are going to be consequences in the commercial real estate. Obviously, that will that won't happen straight away because obviously they're signed leases. There, uh, it's going to be a gradual process. But um, I do agree with Tom. There are um, so JJ, 
I suppose, Sandhurst, and I suppose your career, it's, it's mostly been as a, a remote worker, hasn't it, JJ? Very much so. Uh, and that's uh, it's what, like, the perspective of this is, you have to remember that a lot of folks are, are doing this for the first time, where, you know, some of us, uh, our listeners on, on the, on the, here in the panel, we've been doing this for a, a long time remote, so we're pretty comfortable and, and uh, we get it and it sort of feels real natural. But for a lot of folks, this is not a natural transition. Uh, and like, um, I, I think the, what the, but Caitlin, who is the, I'm a, I have a different comment actually that I want to get to, but I know we don't have a lot of time. So I want to, I want to get this in. Uh, so Caitlin uh, says, uh, now I see the internet as a utility, an essential service, but one I use only for specific purposes. And that's, that's the, uh, that was the most important part of her article for me, because that's the part of it that I think is hard. Like we, we sort of do talk about a little bit, but the, as we're all dealing with, and have dealt with net neutrality, GDPR, I, internet service providers that are uh, sort of rerouting our DNSs and our ads and our traffic and our privacy and all of our things all over the place is that um, we, uh, if the internet is a utility, then um, if the internet was a utility for all of us, then in theory, perhaps we would have a little bit better behavior, uh, not that, uh, all of our utility companies where we live are all the greatest and uh, Lee Energies in Wisconsin is not necessarily always the greatest. They are, just, they are they're the only option we've got. Uh, and so. Hey, at least uh, you don't have to deal with PG&E. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding, right? Uh, but the it, it, we, would, we would have a little bit, uh, and I don't necessarily always want more regulation when it comes to things, but I feel like we would have uh, the money that's invested into our internet service providers may actually go towards uh, providing uh, internet to everyone and equalizing the uh, internet access game, the way that making gas and electric a utility sort of forced every utility to give people electricity and gas uh, and heat for their homes and stuff. Like the fact that the internet isn't really set up as a utility uh, means it is not as equal access to a lot of folks in rural areas and, uh, you know, Andrew out in the cabin, you know, how do you, without Starlink, how do you, or, you know, beaming it from yeah, someplace? We, we maybe have rural areas well, we have, without we have access different... to electricity. Well, yeah. we have different yeah. regulations in the UK. We, we, it is a regulated industry. The, the ISPs are regulated and they have mm -hmm. to have a 98% coverage. Um, here they're, and, they're supposed and, to, but they, yeah. they rarely do. It's not bad here. I get 40 meg. I'm, I'm good in my little log cabin in the countryside. But um, just on that point of regulation, we are very highly regulated and the internet companies have been instructed. It's not um, a request. It's an instruction. And it's happening now in my local town away down the road. It's taking an hour to get through the town center because they're, they're laying fiber optic cables under mm -hmm. instruction. So it's caused, causing caused chaos for the last six months, but at least everyone's going to get fiber optic uh, because it's it's regulated. It's an advantage and also, of living in a country small enough to be paved. Well, for sure. I mean, it's, there's only 70 million people in this country, but there's, there's you know, I live in the countryside. And if you go down to, to, to the West Country, then you're looking at roads that you can't get a van through. You know, that's how small the roads are. So, you know, it's a tough ask for people in Devon in in, in, the, in the west of our country and people up in the north yorkshires and the I, northern i've been Northern's. on some of those roads in Denver. we are not it's they're not lovely, getting, they, but yeah, yeah they've got 3g you know that's it so they're still suffering but it's the percentage isn't it so 98 percent of our country is is wired which is which is cool right let's go let's go on to story three i have uh, something to, to add oh, no, no, go on then. sorry this is actually a topic that i researched extensively uh, um over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, first of all, you can see that in London, like Tom is saying, uh, in San Francisco, in London, um, it's a ghost town, really. All of the, like the central of the city where where the, the, all of the action was, all the big corporations, everyone is just out. You can even see that in real estate prices all over the world, people are moving out of the big cities and we're seeing basically the opposite of what happened at uh, the end of the 18, uh, 1800s, uh, uh, that people are now moving back to smaller communities, to, to rural areas, because internet is, is allowing them to do that. Um, what I think, or what I learned from, uh, from, uh, from looking into this uh, uh, on a global scale, 
is that for us, and I think this panel is a great representation because for us, it's so uh, a standard co co concept to work from home. We've been doing it for years. Um, I had an office uh, before the pandemic just because I felt that I needed an office, but really I also had uh, team, teams working from around the world um, on top of the guys that were coming over to the office. When we shut it down, we, I saved a lot of money and we haven't felt any difference uh, apart from uh, me not needing to walk three minutes to the office that was already close to my house. Uh, um, but the thing is that for us, it was a standard thing. We're working in front of a computer. For, uh, for most of the population, this was a revelation. And they realized what we knew years ago, that it's fine. Uh, so it's hard to go back to... to um, to this uh, uh, artificial architecture that was created back in the 70s, in the 80s, and even the early 90s, that it's mandatory to go into an office to sit in front of people. Well, now you realize that now we are, uh, look at this panel, we're a bunch of people from different places around the world. We're talking smoothly. There is no problem collaborating and communicating. We have a screen in front of us that we can pull in like a whiteboard. There's no need uh, uh, for uh, for office work. So. I, I definitely see the downfall, massive downfall of commercial real estate over the upcoming decade. It's going to take some time, like you guys said, with uh, with contracts and stuff. But it's it's gonna it's gonna you know uh, it's gonna go like flat uh, um, over the upcoming decade. Um, um, and I think it's for the best. You can get better talent when you're working uh, remotely. You don't need to confine yourself as an employer to the people that are in, within the radius of where you are hiring. Um, you can get ch cheaper talent, not because they are in different countries, but also because they are not living in the center of London or the center of San Francisco, where the prices have just spiraled over the over the past couple of decades because of this misperception of um, a, of needing to work uh, a, a shoulder to shoulder. Um, technology is going to fix whatever problems that uh, that uh, are still experienced uh, from this uh, uh, a huge transition that happened over the past uh, uh, two years. But this is uh, there is no turning back from what happened here. Um, in the same way that I don't see myself going and 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 uh, uh, letting a, a massive office in in central London now that I've been working from home. Why would those companies do that? Why? There is no reason. Even the ones that are that are currently so there was a few other ideas here that were that were expressed uh, uh, about about companies that are carrying um, a physical space on top of allowing people to work remotely, and then you're invited to go to the office. Uh, so what the, the past two years have done for society is that it allowed us to find a quiet spot within our homes out of necessity. And that was the challenge for most people that needed to go out uh, uh, over to the office. They just didn't have that peace of mind, but now they do. The uh, the, the house is organized around it. Andrew got a freaking uh, bomb shelter, right? Uh, what is that? Yeah, not everybody has a place at home. And, um, you know, for... A lot of people, the home environment is more distracting than the office environment. But for other people, uh, it's different. Of course, some kinds of jobs, you know, have to be done in person. But I do think that, you know, it will make a huge uh, improvement in, say, traffic if people whose jobs don't require that they actually physically be there don't have to go, you know, don't have to drive in every day, but they go for meetings or, or special uh, uh, events now and then. Yeah. Well, so to, just to conclude, uh, Jonathan, like the, the idea or the solution for this thing is to create exactly what, I don't remember who said it, those word camps. So uh, gatherings or, or team retreats, that this is what uh, company uh, remote companies have been doing already for, for years. Uh, so we're going to see more of that. And, and it's not about Zoom fatigue because Zoom fatigue is about co conversing with your grandma over Zoom. That's, that's going to be gone. You know, you're going to go and visit your grandma and visit your parents. But for work, uh, you can st sit in front of a computer if that's the type of work that you do. Then every few months, you would go and hang out with people on a, on, on a social gathering, not on work related. Yeah. Well, we're going to go. Thanks for that, Vito. We're going to go for a break. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. 
we're coming back. We've had quite, well, I thought we've had quite a good discussion. Let's go into the next story. Breaking down WP Marlonite's 127 shop full site editing study. Um, John, what did you think about this one, John? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting that only, <clears throat> according to this, only 3% of the uh, shops that they looked at were using the Patterns API. Uh, because this seems to be something that will make uh, utilizing themes and then full site editing a lot more uh, easy to do. It did seem like there is a lot of compatibility. I think they said 57% compatibility with uh, block editor support. But uh, it seems like it's still something that a lot of uh, themes and sites are, are starting to implement. I, I'm going to throw this out there. What I think would be interesting to see is a study just on uh, block editor support and feature support on themes that are on theme forest because for a lot of people who are not that well integrated in the community they're just um, building sites on their own and a lot of web design shops still lean on uh, some of the top 10 results from that site so I would be interested in seeing that yeah, so what did you think about this, JJ? Uh, I really didn't like seeing the uh, the numbers regarding the shops that are like completely inactive or just like have stopped participating. 16% of theme shops uh, were inactive, no update, no release uh, for at least two years. And then 32% of theme shops surveyed aren't working on blocks nor full site editing at this time. Like. Uh, it's just a, the num the it's sort of alarming. It's not unexpected, I guess, but it's uh, <clears throat> it's it, the seeing the people that have just given up or that are like not working on it at all. Uh, that was the most shocking to me. I figured everyone everyone seems to be on board and everyone's posting how supportive they are of it now and all the cool stuff that they're doing and working on. And um, and so the numbers still seem high to me that there are people that are. And not then you realize that. It everyone is like, oh, uh, actually, that means like web dev studios and 10 up uh, uh, and not literally everyone. Um, right. And it's I mean, you know, I, I'm hardly a secret. I'm deeply embedded in the uh, Genesis theme framework community. And uh, one of the things that the acquisition by WP Engine has given them is enough resources to uh, dive in. Uh, you know, head first into the block editor and start creating uh, themes based on blocks and start creating uh, the patterns API wasn't really kind of there yet. So they created uh, block collections uh, to go with designs. And, and I think they're kind of working out how is that going to integrate? How is the FSE going to go? Um, but, you know, they wouldn't have been able to do that if there wasn't somebody providing enough funding for the R&D to, uh, to take that on. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been working uh, with it and block patterns are really like comparatively easy uh, uh, to create, uh, to save, to register. Even those of us who still don't know any JavaScript can manage it. Um, mm. So what do you reckon? I, th I, well, I just want to say is that the, the people, you know, the WordPress community didn't really take to Gutenberg. Let's face it; they they hated it. They, you know, they were the Twitter storms all about it and everything. Um, but Extendify.com, they they kind of embraced it. Poodle Press have embraced it. James from Poodle Press has built loads of Woo blocks around it. You know, he's gone the Woo Commerce way. Um, Extendify bought Editor Plus from Munir Kamal. So there are companies investing in in block editors and i think what will happen with um invato and theme forest and and all that kind of stuff is that they'll they'll rely on extendify or page editor or poodle press they'll go okay well we'll, we'll like they integrated slider revolution you know they will integrate these more commercially minded uh people's block editors because they're 
you know, Extendify are, are, are investing a lot of money in this. You know, they're really throwing money at it. And, and James at Poodle Press is basically just concentrating on building blocks. That's that's all they're doing. So as long as two quite big, you know, James is quite a big player in this um, Gutenberg blocks editor stuff. And as long as there's people involved in that, then the, the developers will start embracing blocks much better. And as soon as FSE or full site editing gets there, then I think we'll we'll all be forced to use the block editor anyway. Well, plus I think there's been plenty of people who've decided to hold back because pretty fundamental things change in how Gutenberg does stuff in its code. And then, you know, so like having to, make the shift is one thing having to make the shift like five different times because the core team realized they had to do something that would not the way they did it before gets to be like oh god just tell me when it's over um right so tom um like i say i had the interview with matt medeus from the matt report yesterday we had it was about an hour and a half interview and I'm not surprised by the, these results, Tom, because also because of the things Sally's just said. Um, they, I feel there's been some damaging consequences in the way this Gutenberg project has been handled in the beginning. But being, you know, over 40% plus of all websites are driven by WordPress. I've not been surprised by how this project has gone. What was your thoughts, Tom? Well, someone said it before. I think there's two realities out there. Um, and, uh, you know, there is this reality, as we talked about, that a lot of agencies that we host use Avada and the top 10 theme forest themes, right? And so it's it, those people are so dug in anti Gutenberg because they've heard the buzz from like, you know, years ago when it first launched that they are like, Oh no, well, they, no, we're not, never going to do that. Hey Tom, you just, I've just got in a cold sweat by the remarks you just said. Mm. I just got all hot and bothered there. Tom. <laughs> he's, been, he's been saying the A word. That, <laughs> that happens. I, thought, I, thought, I was quite calm. I thought, my heart skipped Tom. You know, you uh -oh. really, you're pretty bad memories, right? Yeah, uh, right. And, and you know, I mean, everything Sally just said with the multiple. So I think there's a big group. When I talk to groups like this, which are like the forward thinking WordPress folks, like a lot of us see where this is going. It's inevitable. And it's kind of like, why do you want to fight this? Right? Like, it's like, it's really a question of when is the right time to make the switch, right? And so I just feel like there's a whole lot of the mass populace out there that doesn't think like that at all. And they're like, we're never going to this. And so um, there is those two realities out there. But I was actually the optimist again. I was I was impressed by the amount of themes that were adopted. I mean, it's not a super large study, but like, I was like, oh, wow, there's that many. I'm like, <laughs> I might be living too much in that other reality. So what do you reckon, JJ, the voice of reason? I, 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 in some ways, I just don't want to keep attacking the great leader. But um, on the other hand, uh, I think there's been some major problems. And I think this shows up in, in this article in some ways. What do you reckon, JJ? I mean, I'm a spoon, right? So I'll stir the pot. But uh, it's just, I, I think I've I've been, uh, like, well, I'm, I haven't, we're not building much, much for Gutenberg at Sandhills, right? But Affiliate WP has some stuff. EDD, Andrew Monroe's built some blocks. Um, but myself, personally, I, like, I, I agree with Tom that it's, it, it is very much inevitable, but I am, I don't want it to be, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of actively just not participating in it because I I don't why, have why, why 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 don't you want it to be because Come I don't on. I don't I don't like it like uh, the way that it works isn't the way that I work like and and uh, and and. And, and everything from like small things to big things, like small things like the menus don't work the way I want them to. The tooltips don't 
they persist in weird ways, like clicking on stuff like should close it or open it. You click it and it close it hides itself and it reopens again. You click it and it reopens again. Like every little thing, every button that has that's missing an icon is the one that needs an icon. And every button that is only an icon is the one that needs words. Like there's so much about it that just is the opposite of what I feel like WordPress has like proven is the right thing. And so it's like Gutenberg is only the wrong thing. And I, uh, it's got a long way to go. And I don't, is it inevitable? Yes. Will it get there? Yes. Do I like the people that are working on it? Yes. Do I think that everyone has good intentions? Yes. Like it's all, like there's a lot of positive and there's a lot of good things that will eventually happen. But then like the long tail of this, for me specifically, if you're talking about being like forward thinking for the web and on the web, it, like it, by the time that Gutenberg is good, we won't even want it or like it anymore. You know, like it just seems like Blocks are not it's the not most amazing even, thing to Spencer ever happen on the web. I know, I know. It just like the like we've talked about it on a previous show, I think before. Is like the future of the web is Twitch and YouTube and and, and video and uh, God, I hope and not. and it, it and it is. I mean, and, and TikTok and Snapchat and a AR and video and. Like we're working on like the librarians version of the internet. Unfortunately, like we're 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 dumping a lot of money and time and effort into like the the best version of glue and ink for books in a library that eventually people won't go to, and it's just an archive of all of our blogs and websites. I, I, and I don't think and so. text is going anywhere, <laughs> right? I mean, no, video and all those things are, are wonderful, but I, I don't think that, that text is going anywhere. And I think that for all people like Morton like to talk about how, you know, we're going to have like this 360 surround internet, um, the human eye can only track so far back and forth. Uh, uh, you know, you may want that 360s around for a game, for uh, even an exercise simulation, for any number of things. You don't want it for reading. Uh, and there's a lot of other stuff you probably don't want it for. So, uh, you know, I don't think that the, uh, that the web as we know it is going away or that the need for websites as we know it is going away because you're not necessarily going to going to achieve your corporate aims or your e-commerce aims simply by producing TikTok videos uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't produce TikTok videos or that that kind of thing isn't super valuable. But TikTok's already doing a great job at being TikTok. Uh, yeah. I want well, to I move. The, I, I, I want I think to, the, oh, go, the, on, go, go on, JJ. Sorry. The, the, the problem that I have with that idea is like, it, sure, it won't go away, but it is going to age out. We are going to age out of it in the way that like, we don't listen to our AM radios anymore. We really don't listen to our FM radios because it's all commercials and ads all the time. We don't watch television because we know that it's just all ads and commercials all the time. We don't like net watching internet videos and the internet and, and reading websites anymore because they're just all ads all the time. And so like we, uh, yeah, we have, we have effectively the ruined the internet yes, the same I way we have ruined every other really cool thing. Well, and that they're, they're, not gonna, they're not going to ruin all the yeah. things that are I just like, want to. Uh, oh, of course they will. That that problem is advertising. It, it's yeah. not uh, yeah, sure. I, technology. I, I want to move the conversation on. Obviously, we've got a large panel. I just want to, I didn't really quite want to say this, but I'm going to try. I'm, I'm stuck in the middle between you, JJ, and Sally. Um, my position is this, JJ. Um, I, I think... If you look at what LinkedIn LinkedIn uh, has done with their post editor, when you try and use it, it's quite nice. Why why three years almost getting up to almost three years? Why we are not at the stage where you can edit um, text and images as well as LinkedIn? I really don't know. This obsession for a full page editor, I think, is driven by the need to produce a competitor for Squarespace when it comes to WordPress.com. Um, it's not necessary for the present um, downloadable and hosted by other providers. 
that full editing functionality is totally can be provided by Alamator, Beaver Builder, and a host of other um, page building products. And because of these different requirements and needs, we have we have ended up in in the situation we find ourselves, which fundamentally comes down to leadership and um, poor leadership, be quite frank about it. But I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to go on to our other sponsor, and that's Convest.io. And we've got Tom here. I've been singing your praises of your hosting, Tom. You know, um, it's all about performance. Now, Tom, who do you think your hosting packages, which sector would get the most benefit by looking at your products, Tom? Sure. So, and thank you for all the kind words, Jonathan. Um, you know, we're really focused on helping people scale for large events. You know, we had the pleasure of working with Vito to do the, um, the Adderham Summit. If you have an e-commerce site that gets a lot of transactions uh, or a surge of traffic, if you're doing big email blasts to your site and your site slows down when lots of people click through, um, we're really good at helping people scale the back end of WordPress. So LMS sites, WooCommerce sites, sites that require some logged in user experience where there's going to be a bunch of traffic. Uh, and we work a lot with a lot of agencies. And so while, you know, sometimes we're not a great fit for an agency's entire portfolio, we're a great, great fit for some of their customers that have these unique challenges. So we're really good at that. Um, natively, our pr platform is very, very fast. Uh, and so you get a lot of speed and it's um, using technology that's very different than what traditional hosting providers are using in that we're leveraging Docker containers and microservices uh, and your site lives on multiple servers simultaneously. So uh, that's who we help and who I think we drive the most value for. That's great. And Tom's offered a great special offer to the WP Tonic Tribe. You'll find the um, Tom's company's banners all over the WP Tonic website and in the show notes. When you, If you click one of those links or one of those banners, you'll be taken to a Pacific landing page. And Tom has been extremely generous and offered us 30% off all the plans, and that's the lifetime of the plan. That is an amazing deal, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, it, you're the first person I think we've ever done any sort of discount for. So we've not done really any um, discount. Only it, people that signed up very early on got some like beta pricing and whatnot. But we don't typically do um, discounting um, where we're, we're offering things like this. So um, I mean, I think it's a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your support, Tommy. It's much thank appreciated. You. So let's go on to story four, and it's really down your alley, really, um, Tom. It's WordPress hosting performance benchmarks, a review um, sig a signal company. Now, um, when we ever discuss hosting, Tom, it's always extremely popular. It's like it's like talking about page builders. Um, you just get into a war. Who is the best? Obviously, it's a silly question. The question I was going to ask you, the you know, this particular study, it seemed to be <clears throat> pretty well done, but I also get the impression that these kind of case studies, they're very important because a lot of people put a lot, they come up on search quite high up. It is is being found in one of these extensive case studies important for hosting companies in general, Tom? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, so I have, uh, I've been, first of all, I think the new website's amazing. I think it looks great uh, that, that they've launched here. So upgrade on that. And Kevin's methodology for doing these tests is second to none. They're awesome. Um, I think that one of the things companies struggle with, because I've talked to a few people that have been, that have done these and we want to participate in these. And, and I, so I started asking people like, you know, how, is it difficult? What's it like? And it's interesting, the feedback that I got was, you know, um, depending on the hosting provider and how they scale up resources, I got some surprising feedback that it could cost 
uh, companies thousands of dollars to participate in these just in the capacity of compute and extended load that they're putting on things. So if you're a premium provider, like using AWS or Google, and you have to spin up resources to test this, you know, high load, it can be very, a very large investment for uh, hosting companies. So that was one interesting thing that I heard. And I think the other thing that I heard was, you know, it's not so much of a lead gen thing for hosting companies. It's more of you can use it to sort of validate as a third party, you know, validate your performance. And so, um, you know, those are some of the things anecdotally I've heard. I, you know, the one thing I was a little surprised about this year was, it, and I haven't, I don't know the amount, but it feels like the amount of participating hosts went down. And, uh, you know, I look at this list and I'm missing people that I would expect to be here like Pagely, yeah. you know? Um, so that was kind of my takeaway on this. Yeah, I agree. What do you reckon, Angie? What did you think of the article? Well, the again, the, 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 it's the cost of participation. So, you know, you've got some big companies involved in there. 20i are, are one of the biggest in the UK, the second, one of the second largest uh, shared hostings in there. Um, but, the, you know, to spin up those stuff, but it's also your staff and your, it's not about just cost of, of, of physical cost of cash. It's about the resources that you have to apply to, actually participate in this kind of exercise and also it, it but if the companies looked at it as well actually this guy's examining our our services and you know we want to have that information from an independent and what i like about this is is it is totally independent they have to they give he gives out the the, the honest truth about stuff that's going on but again, for startups or for people that are, don't particularly want to spend up to 20 grand or 10 grand on, on, on participating in this kind of thing, that's why the, um, the amount of people participating in it has gone down. Let's not forget, and Tom, Tom will uh, confirm this, there are thousands of web hosts out there, thousands yeah. Um, you know, and whether or not they've got their own service or whether they're resellers or whether they, they say they're, you know, EI, how much has of EIG got? They've got 300 hosts and they or something, whatever it is, the EIG group. So to have, I don't think he could physically take on more than 20 hosts anyway and do a, and do a reasonable job. So, but it is a good indication, you know, you've got some big ones in there in motion. Obviously I know them because they bought one of my companies and, and 20i, I use them because I use them for people that don't actually want to pay for hosting um, and all this kind of stuff. But there is, if you look at 34SP as well, very much used by lots of UK companies as well. Um, and very good. You know, I don't like, I don't particularly like their control panel, but the speed, the service and the support of these companies that I've just mentioned is phenomenal. Uh, and that's why they want to take part. But I think it, what he does is a fantastic job. And it, it, I spent four hours going through this, and that's not enough. That's no, not enough. it is rather decent. What, do you, what did you reckon about it, John? The, um, it's like I said before, the, um, it's a pay-to-play thing. I've seen some this particular site with doing the hosting reviews. I've seen them in the past do some of the bigger names like Pagely and Liquid Web and WP Engine, Flywheel. Um, you know, it's, it's, it is missing some of the bigger names, but um, there are a ton of hosts out there. There's new hosts uh, coming up all the time. Um, I only know a few of these, but uh, if you're looking to uh transition off of your existing plan this might be a good uh, way to evaluate what to look for as far as benchmarking and what type of uh, speed things you should be looking for yeah well i think the main thing is i think the panel and um unless somebody else wants to chirp in i want to move on to the next story I have but, to stay around this one yeah go on you have a chirp in then Vita. Uh, um so like there's loads of hosting companies. I don't think that this uh, this uh, 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 you know this might be a great solution, like Tom is saying, for a company to benchmark itself against other people within the space. Um, for an end user, 
it doesn't really matter. You know, you're going to choose uh, Green Geeks or GoDaddy or one and one What's the difference? There's no difference. So just go with the one that you're using and just go for it. The only reason to really dive into a different hosting company, in my opinion, is if you have a unique use case. In this case, um, this doesn't really do the trick because these are the base plans, the standard kind of, uh, um, a, you know, off the shelf offerings and so if you have a high traffic website then you need a company like Convesio uh, uh, or something to to do that particular use case but if you just have like a bunch of websites put it on godaddy put it on wp engine put it on kinsta put it wherever they're all right kind of the same and move on really that's my opinion well fair enough uh, i don't totally agree with that but i understand where you're coming from um so let's move on um to moving Bitlinko to a headless WordPress and Next.js. So, JJ, what did you, you know, um, headless WordPress, you know, um, I discussed this with Matt Medeiros yesterday because he's been discussing it quite a bit in his interviews with a few people. What, what was your view about this article and what do you think some of the key things people got to know about headless WordPress. Only a slight question, but I know you'll keep it uh, as focused as possible, JJ. Uh, the one thing that I mean, there's it's like most things. There's a, there's a lot that I do like about the direction of headless WordPress, and a lot of things that I think are very good for it. Um, I, I really am a big fan of WP GraphQL and GraphQL in general. There's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of code there. There's a lot to understand, but. Um, but I think the separation, uh, I think Next.js is really awesome. I like Svelte also. Like they're, they're really cool libraries that I think are. Before um, you go, starting. Dan, do you mind just telling the listeners those that are not quite so up with this, like, unlike you, what are, why are so many developers like yourself interested in headless WordPress? And what are some of the quick benefits of it? Well, I think the, the primary I'm I'm going to well, believe it or not. There isn't a lot that like Sandhills does, or that like I don't really work with it all that often. Uh, and so I'm probably not the best expert to to sell all of the benefits to it. But I do understand it uh, very thoroughly and 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 everything else. So uh, I think like the the primary benefit is uh, there are two. I guess is like. Um, separates out a lot of the like front end theme side sort of markup from WordPress itself. It gives, does give uh, front end uh, designers and developers a little bit of autonomy relative to uh, living inside of WordPress and WordPress's theme engine and the way that WordPress themes things. So I think that it is freeing. I think there is a lot of freedom that, uh, that folks get by uh, decoupling the, 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 the rendering engine inside of WordPress to just be something that lives outside of it. Um, and that's, that's the first part of it. And I think like the, the, the performance benefits that are there come from like the time to first byte and having to not hit PHP or WordPress or having to load up all of that server side stuff uh, and have most of that stuff live in a CDN uh, have it lived out in the web without ever having to access or touch WordPress at all. So those are the two, I think, primary sort of benefits to uh, to using something headless. There are there are others, but those are the two that I see that are the most important. Uh, Security is pretty high on the list because it's decoupled. It's away from WordPress. It's not or a CMS. It, it's it's so you know to access the the admin area is harder. Let's say. Uh, well, because it's invisible. Um, and Stratic, you know, the, an Israeli company are doing particularly well on this. They, I think they got a load of investment, millions of dollars investment uh, last year. So I think people are actually taking it seriously. And what it does, it takes away the um, stress of running a WordPress site, even though you're still running a WordPress site because you've, you've decoupled it. But, you know, you can still publish, you can still do lots of other stuff but it's the where i would be worried if if i was you and pippin is the transactional side of it because you still need that connection to php on that side so you have to almost 
decouple word decouple it from wordpress for your static content and then recouple it for your commercial your, your, your e-commerce side so i think sandhills development because you've got some uber developers there i think one of the things that i would like to see from sandhills and this isn't just about you because you're here i would i didn't even know you were coming on but i would like sandhills to look at decoupling the products so, and then just kept reconnecting them to the to the actual purchasing engine because edd is complex i've used it for many many years you know elegant marketplace was, was powered by easy digital downloads and um it can be a bit heavy if you've got say a site that's getting a few few hundred thousand hits a, a, a day you know so you've got to and that's just as that's the same as woocommerce you know any kind of thing that's connected to to wordpress that uses php and mysql the the chat takes that's why we need people like Cavicio, you know to be able to help us balance that load mm -hmm. and get the transactional time like that that's mm -hmm. that's that's what i'd like to see with headless i'd like to see a, a dual kind of headless situation going on there with e-commerce so what did you I, reckon of, oh, sorry go on i had actually i had a conversation with miriam the founder of uh, stratic uh, exactly around the uh, uh, why Really, that was my question. Like, why? What, what's the what's the benefit of this? Three main benefits, which is security. That's the top one, really. Uh, scalability and uh, uh, and efficiency of resources. So, like, it basically makes it um, a lot more a lot greener than uh, the standard uh, operations or the standard websites that are running uh, nowadays. That's why a lot of companies are seeing this as the future from from scalability and so on. Um, the challenge is like the saying is running those, uh, you know, those, uh, um, those uh, um, dynamic stuff uh, through something like this, because really you want to think about this more as a static, uh, as a static approach for websites. So if you have a static approach, a static website, a news website or um, anything that kind of doesn't need to be back to have that back and forth with the server. I think that's the logical approach nowadays, especially with tools like Stratic that are out there that, uh, that can just like uh, um, take a lot of this load off of you. When it comes to WordPress, I, I think, and I, I would disagree with you on this, on JJ, because I think that one of the uh, one of the cool things about WordPress is the flexibility of uh, and, and you know the plugin suites, the tens of thousands of plugins that you can uh, play with. Uh, that will work. You got to have that uh, um, deep integration and really choose the tools that you're playing with carefully. So you're basically take, going from 60,000 plugins to like six. Uh, and th that really limits a lot of the possibilities uh, uh, out of the box when it comes to Gemstack and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, decoupled websites. That being said, I see the future of companies like yours and us uh, uh, investing a lot into making sure that this will be possible because I do believe that that there's a big future in um, in this technology and this is really where the where the world will be going not five years maybe not even ten years but fifteen years from now um, it's going to be a big um, big player uh, uh, you know in the ecosystem. All right. Um... I want to move things on, actually, get to our recommendations and get this wrapped up. Uh, Tom seems to have left us. Hopefully, he's going to come back. Um, so, uh, he put a little note in saying that it, it, he had to leave at 9.30. Oh, right. Fair and enough. we should all connect with him on LinkedIn. That'd be great. Um, so before we go into our recommendations of the week, I want to talk about a webinar that I'm doing on the le Friday the 11th of this month. Um, it's going to be around 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to be with um, the pan uh, my panelist, Spencer Forum. It's, it's going to be the final one of a series of three that we've been doing. Basically, we'll be covering how to use his plugin, Launch Flows, plus a, a selection of other key plugins plugins which will allow you to do marketing optimization for yourself and for your clients um, and produce a standard of optimization that's comparable or better than a platform like ClickFunnels at about the fifth of the price. 
So if that sounds interesting for yourself and maybe interesting for your clients, um, you need to join us at, on the 11th at 10.30. How do you do that? Well, just go to the show notes and there will be a link there. You click it. It will take you to Spencer Forum's website. You'll be able then to sign up. He will then send you a reminder and a link where you can join us and ask Spencer actual questions. Should be great fun. Please join us. So we're going to go on to our recommendations of the week. My one is a little bit outside technology. Obviously, somebody from Britain that lived through the Great Recession of America, and especially in Nevada, and saw the um, many people lose their homes and go through the pain of that kind of loss. Um, you should be interested in this book from a man called Bill Black. He's a the expert on bank fraud, and he has wrote a book called um, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Uh, um, it is, um, you can get it in audio books as well. It is a fantastic read or a fantastic book to listen to. He totally explains how the banking system in America and in Britain really works. And it's a bit of an eye-opener to say he has over 30 years' experience in regulating American banks and investigating their malpractices, which are, to say, extensive would be a, a slight limit. Um just a great that book. would be a british understatement sort of thing that would be just a slight one actually it truly is i i open the book actually um you will not leave listening or reading it as the same person that when you started reading it put it that way so andrew have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers do me last i'm still looking for it i remember right. i can't remember what it was yeah, sure. <laughs> JJ, have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Well, since you're going off the uh, the tech script, then I will too and recommend a book that was recently recommended to me called The Scout Mindset, Why Some People See Things Clearly and Others Don't. Uh, and so it, it came, uh, it was recommended to me because I was having a conversation with a friend uh, kind of about this topic, about... Uh, I had this like weird thought about uh, um, just about how uh, people uh, react to new information and how people uh, go through emotion and a process. Sort of, there's seven stages of grief when they're they're learning something new, and uh, whatever they whatever they knew previously uh, is gone. And uh, and so it, it, we, this this book sort of came up, and it's uh, I'm only a little bit in, but it's been. Uh, it's been sort of uh, revealing and eye-opening. So that's my that's my pick. Of the well, it sounds fascinating, JJ. If you could put the link into the Slack channel, um, sure. that would be really helpful, and I'll make sure that the link's in the show notes. Sally, um, got anything you want to recommend to the listeners and viewers? Well, I'm going to take the easy out today and recommend uh, ACF Pro if you are like one of the five developers on the planet not using it yet. Um, uh, 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 and uh, also there have been some and nice improvements to uh, WP Migrate DB Pro. Uh, so, uh, yes, go check those out if you haven't yet. Yeah, I think you want to bag that pretty soon, don't you? Especially, uh, are they still offering the lifetime deal? No, they they stopped that uh, uh, a couple of years ago with the ACF, but the the sub, the annual subscription is pretty reasonable. Oh yeah. Um, so, Andrew, have you found it, what you wanted to recommend? Yeah, I did. And I can't. I can't believe that I forgot it. But it was because uh, I got distracted by something that JJ said. But um, oh, it's my fault. I understand. I'll take the heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been following uh, Chris Lemmer for a while, and he was on the. You yeah, haven't, have Lemmer. you? I have. I <laughs> no, and I didn't necessarily know. agree. I didn't necessarily agree what he said. And I met him at, at, at St. Louis. We were at St. Louis, Vito and I, and, and a few others. And I had a quick two minutes with him, and he scared me because he said, I'm watching you. So I've gone, okay. Um, <laughs> I would be scared written, as yeah. well. He, he, basically basically did this. he basically did this. So, um, But 
he he's written consecutively for something like 160 days of blogs blog posts i can't believe and he's done that all himself you know maybe he hasn't maybe uh, maybe he's got, a, 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 got a, it's all good know, stuff conversion, conversion.ai or whatever it's called there, there's a there's a thing out there but his blog posts are really quick to read they're like three minutes he did a seven minute you'll you'll like this one he did a seven minute series or seven videos which lasted about seven minutes in total on how to build a membership site brilliant you know so if, if anyone's missing out on blogging or or wants to know about blogging or how to do something in woocommerce or wordpress you know go to chrislemmer.com um and it's i love his i love his blog posts i love his uh, is he paying you for that recommendation not in not in any way not in any way i just i just i've just really got into it and i read his blog posts every single day so oh, I think, well, there you, go. you, you know, should ask him for payment. He would he would ask you. He wouldn't pay me. It's the other uh, way round. It's the yeah, other way yeah. round with Lemma. You know. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Uh, Bless his heart. Marketer. Bless his heart. He's half lost. Some I got to give him. He looks he looks really fit. He has lost a lot of weight, and good good to him. He looks much much fitter. Um, Vito, got anything you want to recommend? No. Not oh, really, not this week. Uh, I've been. Oh, the- Vito, <laughs> you, mean you couldn't find anything that you want to share well, with, my, with our beloved listeners and viewers. I thought, should I share something? But really, I haven't seen anything uh, new that was appealing to me. So I'd rather not just uh, add to the noise that there's already out there. Well, it never stopped me, Vito, <laughs> but I'll leave that to your <laughs> judgment, actually. Um, John, have you got anything you want to recommend to the listeners? And yes, viewers? I surely do. So the underrepresented in tech vlog, which if you're not watching that, you should, because there's some very important discussions going on there. Um, they're converting that to a podcast and they're asking. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> yeah. So make it easier for people to consume that because a lot of us uh, in the community listen to podcasts, but they're asking for sponsorships to help offset the cost. Uh, I think it's $100 an episode, and uh, if you buy uh, big chunks, you can save some money uh, on that. So a great opportunity for WordPress companies that care about diversity, inclusion, and having all voices be heard to put their money, literally put their money where their mouth is and help this out. And remember, too, that... This is a database, uh, the underrepresented in tech database. Uh, so if you're looking for people to hire, uh, if you're looking for people to speak at a conference or uh, appear on a podcast, you can do this because this is something, and you, you can see from the homogeneity of this panel, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, of panels and, and scenarios like this where there needs to be more representation. It's well, not all it one. Um, get yeah. at it, and I, yeah. uh, I, I, I will yeah. be doing it, John. Thanks, thanks for it. the prod. Uh, um, I will be getting on with it in the next few weeks. So, panel, um, Andrew, what's the best way to get hold of you and learn more about what you're up to, Andrew? You're muted, Andrew. That was really cool. To what I just said as well. You can find me at <laughs> Arnie Palmer on twitter and this is andrewpalmer.com and you'll see who i represent on there along with uh, myself Vito, how can people find out more about you and your company check out atarim.io uh, or join our facebook group uh, where we help uh, agencies and talk about your work the day-to-day stuff that we're all dealing with jj what's the best way to find your wizard knowledge and opinions Twitter and GitHub at JJJ, JJJ.blog, and uh, sugarcalendar.com. That's great. John, what's the best way to find out more about you? Lockdown SEO. And if you dare, you can follow me on Twitter, lockdown underscore. And Sally, what's the best way to find out more about you and what you're up to? I am at Sally Getch on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my business is WPFangirl.com, and I hang out a lot in the uh, business of WordPress, ladies at WP, and uh, Genesis Slack communities. 
And if you really want to support the show and um, be a member of the tribe, join the um, the WP Tonic Facebook group. Um, you find the link in the show notes. Um, there's links all in the show notes. You click it and you join our group. And we're um, John, myself, Spencer, many of those that use Facebook are in there, and um, we're trying to build it up and build up a real community. So join us in that Facebook group. We'll be back next week with another great discussion. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.